to entrepreneurship and particular skills and then found partners to give them what is called starter packs that is equipment resources to enable them to start businesses to do the things that they can do well to change their environment a few weeks ago we began to do it here in Delta and right here in Ozoro, we are carrying out the training of these hundred young people. And I shall be here to lecture them personally myself Monday after their in a Monday week, as they say in the English language. And I'm very, very honored to know that you are committed to the same process of empowering yourselves so that you can make a difference in this our environment that is changing. One of the things that I'd like to tell you is that if there are only two things that need to be done to bring progress, to bring development, those two things are education and healthcare. These are called the social sectors. Any government that is told that it can do only two things, the two things that it must choose to do is to educate the people and ensure that they are well. And educated people who are well can do any other thing. But staying well in today's world, being educated, must recognize the fact that the very planet in which we live is in serious trouble. I don't know how many of you were following last year CNN was running a series that was titled A Planet in Peril. Now, this subject is even one of greater urgency since the United States of America elected a president who, as was said, I was speaking at a conference in California two weeks ago in Sacramento, the capital of California, it was organized by a group of doctors who are worried that they have a president who is a science doubter, as they call him. A president who does not recognize the things that science has been saying about our planet, about the danger facing our planet. And so as doctors who are worried that they might be the ones who will bear the consequence of not doing the things that should be done to make policies, make behavior of man more sensitive to the environment, they thought they should organize a big conference to discuss the matter. They even went on a protest march before the conference. And I was invited to be the speaker at that conference. And one of the things that came out of the conversations at that conference came to play just this very week when the United States of America withdrew from the Paris Agreements. Now what that means is that if we continue at the rate that we are going around the world with environmental pollution, and those of us who live in oil producing areas are already seeing the effects of gas flaring. There is already reported that the rate of cancer will increase in some of our areas here because of gas flaring. Because the environment is overheated from all the flaring. And so we have reason to want to educate ourselves about how to care for the environment. The environment is a heritage that we receive from our forefathers. It's a heritage given to them by God. I don't think that we will be treated kindly by history if we destroy it for our children and their children. And so concern for the environment is a very important one. And I salute you, I salute your leadership for recognizing that this is a very serious matter and that women need to be empowered to take the kinds of actions that will prevent the environment from becoming a challenge in the future. So congratulations again on that. Most of the work that I do is around the subject of economic development. 
there is a professor at Princeton University in the United States who won the Nobel Prize for economics the year before last, in 2015. His name is Angus Deaton. Angus Deaton has written a book titled The Great Escape. It is really a reflection on how a section of humanity has managed the great escape from history. It's an argument that there is about enough. There are enough resources in the world for there to be no poverty on earth. But because we do not have the political will, we know how and we know why, there are many people on this planet who are living in misery. But our duty is to facilitate the great escape from misery, from all of humanity. The title of that book, The Great Escape, Health, Wealth, and the Origins of Inequality, suggests that we should all be concerned about trying to improve the lot of everybody in society. We are all called by our friend and nature to be people who share in the problems of all of humanity. Human solidarity should live in our consciousness. And that will make us work together to overcome the problems of this planet and create a better future for our children. And the starting point is by educating them well. This is why women are so important. Because as the old saying goes, if you educate a woman, you educate the world. Because women are the first teachers of their children. In fact, women with their husbands supporting them are more important teachers of the children than those who run schools. Those who run schools are actually people providing support service. The real education that children get begins in the home. This is why whenever the family is breaking down, society is under threat of becoming less educated. There is a, an American magazine called US News and World Report. Every year, US News and World Report carries out a survey of the biggest problems that teachers have in schools. In the 1950s, the biggest problem that teachers used to have in schools were talking out of tongue. That is when a student speaks, the body teacher says, it's your turn to speak. Or chewing gum in the classroom. That was a big problem in the 50s. Today, the problem is carrying guns to school, shooting a classmate so that you can take his night in shoes, carrying drugs to school, and all of that. And the research that has gone into why this is happening suggests that this is the result of the breaking down of the American family. So we must make an effort to keep our families together. Because when our families are together, we are better able to educate our children, to have the kind of character, the kind of morals, the kind of readiness to learn that will help us deal with the challenges of our planet better. And we'll build a more harmonious society in which progress is within the reach of everybody. I would like to say that there are many, many consequences for the kinds of difficulties that we face in society today. But there is nothing that can come our way that determined mothers cannot overcome. Because women nurture children, they have in them the milk of human kindness, understand the worth of a human life and the dignity of the human person. And so God has given you a special place. Many men who make trouble, in fact, I can tell you this for free, I have many friends who are top generals in the army. They make trouble when they get home. They respect the commander in chief of the house, their wives. <laughs> And so I would like to urge you to use that power that you have. They say the man may be the head, but the woman is the neck. And the head cannot turn if the neck does not allow it to turn. So, neck, make sure that the head is turning in the direction that will make peace.
bring progress and that we bring prosperity to all of our people. I thank you for having this conference and wish you all the very best as we go forward. Let's see put our hands together for the prophet. I attended a church last week. When the pastor was preaching, 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 the time for deliverance came. Before I knew, all members started singing. Pastor from Versailles, from Versailles. He told us, <laughs> if we ask a professor,